time to show you guys what this is all about. So we're going to pull up bids here. And everything that we're going to be doing today is going to be inside a inside of a bids package here. We'll just call this webinar. Let me create a quick package. And okay. And I'm just going to drag over a data flow. Like I said, we're not going to cover control flow today. We're going to just hop right into the data flow. So the first thing that you'll notice over here on the left-hand side of my screen is that we've got three main portions to our toolbox. We have that source, we have the source, the transforms, and the destinations. So we just talked about you know what what kind of stuff you can do with each one of these, and this is where you're going to locate that stuff right over here in the toolbox. Okay. So. The first thing it will do is we'll expand our sources. And again, you notice there's more stuff on the list here than I had on that PowerPoint slide there. Um, but again, the using our Excel flat file and OLEDB. Uh, so we'll just drag over an OLEDB destination or a source here, and let me create a quick connection. Inside of SSIS, the key to getting data is obviously being able to connect to data. And the way that we do that is through the use of connection managers. Um, these can be created in a variety of ways. If you're in the control flow, there's a couple of tasks that you can create them inside of it, or as I did here, right-click and do new connection from one of these options. Alternately, if you just have a source out here, you'll notice that there's a new button over here on the right-hand side. So what we can do is click on new, and we can choose where we want to get this data from. I'm going to choose my Contoso database. It's a good, uh, good uh, sample database that you guys can download for free off CodePlex from Microsoft. Um, so that one's out there for you guys to use. Okay, the next thing that you're going to notice inside of our source here, and this is going to be a little bit different when we look at both Excel and flat file sources, uh, you have the option to do tables or SQL commands. Uh, in this case, if you do a table from the drop down, you never want to do that. It's just like doing a select star. Select star is always bad, select star is always bad, select star is always bad. Don't do select star. You'll notice, though, that if I do click a, a table off of here and I go over to columns, I can actually uncheck things. So let's say I only want my inventory key and my date key. Um, <clears throat> if I only want to pull back those two, I can just pull back those two columns. But notice that I still have the table in the drop down here. Now, a lot of people will think, OK, I'm unchecking all the rest of the columns, so it's going to go through and filter those out. Yes, it will filter them out, but only after it brings back every single column. So I've got about 15 columns in that table, but I only checked off two. It's still going to bring in every one of them, but it's only going to allow me to use these two. So it ends up actually pulling back everything and then filtering the data. So if you only want to bring back inventory key and date key, what you're going to want to do is do a SQL command and do select inventory key, comma, date key from backed online sales, or whatever table that happened to have been. So do that instead. And then over here on the columns, well, I put the wrong table name in there, but on the columns, you'll only get those two columns instead of all of them. So that's your uh, OLEDB source here. Let's take a quick look at a couple of the other ones. So we have a flat file source as well. Again, same thing. You have the option to create a new connection over here. And if I click on new, you'll notice that my screen that I get that pops up is much, much different than whenever I created a new connection for a table or for a SQL server. So here what we need to do is we actually need to give this a name, so we'll just call this flat file. And then we're going to actually browse for a file instead of picking a server or a table. Um, so what we'll do in here is we'll go over to my C drive and I've got some flat files out here on a module resources folder. Notice by default that this over here on the bottom actually shows text files. So right now my screen is only showing text files, but you can use multiple different, you can use multiple formats uh, whenever you're talking about a flat file. So a flat file doesn't necessarily have to be text, it could be a CSV file, or in this case here you'll notice that we have a .dat file. Um, all of, there's, there's many different kinds of flat files, in this case I'm just going to use the .dat but note, you can use a .txt, .csv, any of those other kind of flat file formats as well. Okay. All righty. So the next thing is, okay. 
Uh, the next thing we're going to do, now that we have chosen our file here, notice that you have uh, some options for the code page here if you need to change those. More often than not, the defaults here are going to work. And then you have a bunch of different options here for the format of the file. So is our file delimited? Is it a fixed width? Or is it a ragged write? So um, if it's a fixed width, you're going to have a, a little bit different uh, situation going on here. You notice when I do that, the text qualifier goes away. Reason for that, uh, if a file is a fixed width, it obviously knows where the columns are going to be ending at. So it doesn't need to qualify the text. So in this case, I actually just have a delimited file here. And we've got some options here to skip some rows or look for the columns in the first row of data. We're going to leave the defaults here for just a second so I can show you guys what's going on here. So if I go over to columns, I get a little bit of a preview of the data. And you'll notice right away that there's several things that are wrong here. One, I've got column names up here in this first row. And two, I have the inability to draw a box because I'm pushing the wrong button. And I have quotes. So I have all of my text inside of these files is encased inside of quotes. So I need to tell SSIS, one, that I have this first row of column headers, and then two, that all my data is encapsulated inside of quotes. So the way that we do that is over here on this tab. Again, we have the text qualifier option here. By default, it goes to none, and we want to tell it that it's inside of double quotes. Be sure that whenever you do this, you only put one text qualifier. So it's actually, I, what we really have in there is text, and then we have another quote. So um, a lot of times, a pretty common error for people is to say, okay, well, my text is encapsulated in a quote, double quote on each side, so I'm going to put two sets of double quotes in there. If you do that, it's not going to work for you. So you only have to do uh, which the single character that does the text qualification. Okay, so if we go back over to our columns, you notice that that cleans up our data pretty nicely, and we now we just need to fix this first row of columns. <clears throat> so column names and first row of data, and when we go back over, then everything is uh, nice and pretty. So we've got our column names up there at the top, we have all of our data down here at the bottom, and it's been all uh, text qualified and everything. Uh, notice that we do have some data issues here. Uh, we have some zip codes that are a little bit unconventional and we'll talk about how to fix those with transformations here. If you do mess anything up in here, feel free to just click on the reset columns and it'll actually go through, scan the metadata with, the, with those settings that you just created and, um, uh, and it'll reset the, the columns for you. So something weird that you need to keep in mind, just to watch this real quick here, if I'm on the general tab and I don't put a text qualifier in but I click column names and first row of data, Notice that my column names go up there, but whenever I do the text qualifier, it doesn't remove it from my columns. So if everything in this file is text qualified, just make sure you do this in the right order. Come through here, put the text qualifier on, and then say column names and first row of data, and everything will be fine.